You know, do you notice that there's not a ton of micro ATX and mini ITX cases on the market? I mean, there's quite a few options, but not nearly as many as mid tower ATX cases. And that's because the mid tower cases outsell the micro ATX and the mini ITX cases by a long shot. But Corsair has an answer to this. No need to worry. They decided to take the ATX form factor and the micro ATX form factor and squish it together to form a compact ATX form factor case. It looks and feels like a micro ATX case, but fits all your ATX hardware, like motherboard and power supply stuff. That's pretty cool. But that invites its own challenges because now it's smaller and it's not like building in a regular mid tower case. No, it's different. So it requires more planning, a different set of thinking when building your computer, but no need to worry because I'll be here to guide you through that on what it's like building in the Corsair 220T. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have here the beautiful Corsair 220T. As you can see, it's got nice airflow in the front and the top and around all sides of this case, really, which is just really the front and the top. But that's the most important parts right there. It's $110, okay? You have this nice front panel, which is metal, okay? Look at this. You got a dust panel right here three Corsair RGB fans, don't know what the exact name of them are, and there's a lighting node in the rear of the case for all your RGB goodness. We've also got some awesome stuff from Corsair. We got 32 gigs of 2066 DDR4 Vengeance Pro RAM, and also the H1, hold on, and also the H110i, the white edition. So it's gonna be a nice aesthetic build, of course, but let's see what it's like to build in this case. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a sense of scale here. This is a GTX 1070. So obviously that's probably as far as you wanna go. You're probably not gonna get a triple fan GPU in here. I'm just saying. The first thing we're gonna do here is get these little thumb screws off here. This is a four thumb screw panel design. There's nice little rubber grommets on the edge of the thumb screw so that uh, protects the glass, reduces vibration and the thumb screws are also painted in the matching color of gray that is the trim with the white case. So I like that. Very aesthetic, very nice, very nice Corsair. I see it, I see it. Let's take this off. There is still plastic on here. We're just gonna leave that on so that we do not get all our fingerprints all over the glass. And when I mean we, I mean me. So we have nine standoffs already pre-installed for a standard ATX motherboard. Of course, you can go with micro ATX or mini ITX. Now it looks like these cables attaching to the front IO are covering up some of those standoffs. So we're gonna have to take these out of the way in order to install our motherboard. Now apparently there is clearance for a 360 millimeter radiator in the front. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but they said it can work, so it can work. All right, another thing to note is that they individually bagged each type of screw which I really appreciate, especially for new timers. They don't know which screw is which. You can tell from which screw is looking like a different screw and you can look in the manual for reference and actually get the matching screw to where you need it so that you're not looking around for all the different types of screws. Right now I don't have the CPU cooler installed, but uh, the IO shield is pre-installed in here. So I would say if you didn't have that on your motherboard, make sure you get that IO shield installed before you put in the motherboard. I've made that mistake. A lot of people have. Don't be one of those people. I'm gonna get all these motherboard standoffs screwed in, and if anything unusual comes up, I'll let you guys know. So I got the motherboard screwed in, looks fine. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't install the AIO yet. That's because it's gonna be going up on top. Now the clearance on top is limited, but since we're working with a 240 millimeter radiator, we'll be able to move it up towards the front of the case over here on the top panel. And that's important because if we look at our CPU connectors right over here, that's gonna be tight. So try installing the CPU connectors after you already have fans or a radiator installed over here. So what we're gonna do first is get everything plugged in and then we'll worry about installing the AIO. If you don't have any fans or anything going up on top, Sure, go ahead, install your CPU cooler if it's an air cooler and you'll be fine. Otherwise, if it's an AIO and it's going on the top, then you're gonna have to install the cables first. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually install the power supply. And I'm debating on whether or not I'm feeling lucky with this because I wanna install white PSU extension cables, but I don't know what kind of room I'm working with in the rear of the case, so 
We'll see how that goes. Okay, right here we have a simple two thumb screw, unscrew type of design, and it just slots out like that. And there you go, there's the rear of the case. Now there is not much room back here, I'll be honest. So this looks like it's going to be pretty tough. All right, we're looking at the rear of the case right now. That's, that's my finger, okay, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a 1070. There is not much room back here. Well, I'm gonna try to cable route this. We'll see how this goes. Technically, there is something else you can do in case you run out of room. There's hard drive cages on the bottom of the case. Let me show you that. All right, so there is a hard drive cage right here, and this is completely removable if you need it to be. I, for one, don't have any hard drives. I'm using all SSDs or NVMe SSDs. In this particular case, I'm using just an NVMe SSD that's going right into the motherboard, so I have no external drives technically. So I can take out this hard drive cage, and you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to take out the hard drive cage and get those YPSU cables in there, and we'll see what we're working with. Alrighty, so this is the hard drive cage right here, and this can slide forward or backwards. Right now, it slid into the most rear position, which allows for a radiator. Now, if you were trying to fit a standard ATX power supply, like this one, into here, in the configuration that this hard drive cage is, it's not going to fit. Because watch, even if I had no cables on here, this thing is just not going to fit, especially with the cables attached. See, I'm no hands, not going. You would have to slide forward the hard drive cage, and then you'd be canceling your clearance for a 360 millimeter rad. It might say it has clearance for it, but in all honesty, you would need a smaller form factor power supply. This is gonna have to come out either way for this power supply, or I can move it forward and then I would be able to fit it, but I wanna remove it altogether just because I have cable extensions on. Now, I lied. I told you guys I was getting white cable extensions. Instead, they're gray, they're carbon, but they're cool, they're cool. So in order to remove the hard drive cage, there is one screw here and four screws on the bottom. I'm gonna take that out. And out comes the hard drive cage. Simple as that. And in case you guys are wondering, the hard drive cages come out by just pushing in the tabs and sliding out. Simple as that. All right, so before I install this behemoth of a power supply, I'm gonna get the IO cables connected and uh, the USB 3.0 connectors, just so I don't have to work around the power supply getting underneath and to this rubber grommet or anything like that. So I want to make sure I get all those cables plugged in first before I'm dealing with the power supply. So as you can see here, we have all the IO connections installed. We also have the three fans from right here that are already pre-installed. All the RGB cables coming from these fans are already installed into the lighting node. We'll talk a bit about that in a little bit. We also have our USB cable for the lighting node and also our HD audio and our USB 3.0. Now that we have that stuff installed, we can go ahead and install the power supply. Okay, so I got all the big cables plugged in. I'm not cable managing just yet because now it's time to get the AIO installed. Now there's a lot of great tie down points over here, okay? So we've got tie down points, like places to put your zip ties to tie cables against the frame, all along here, up here, along over here, and even down here where the power supply is, running along the entire bottom most panel of the case. That's really cool, I'm, I haven't seen that yet. So it also gives you a decent amount of gap over here between the power supply and the edge of the frame right here so that you can actually put cables over here. Even though this part is thin over here, down here there's like at least an inch, maybe a little bit more for you to put cables over here. So smart thinking right there to have the power supply just ever so slightly shifted over to the side over here so that you're given more space for cables without making the entire case wider. And talking about this lighting node right here, so this is for the RGB fans. Now it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So yes, these are labeled. These are ports one through three and four through six. Now you have to make sure that you plug these in in ascending order. So you need to have one, two, three, and then four. Or if you had five fans, one, two, three, four, and five. You have to make sure it goes in order. So how it's gonna count the fans, one, two, and three, that's how it's lined up over here, port one, port two, point three. Or if you wanted, you'd have the middle fan port number one, and you'd have that one go off first and then the others. It's to give them some sort of address when the LEDs are being 
controlled by the software. All right, so let's get that AIO in. Hopefully we have no issues. It seems as though we have run into our first issue, our first compatibility issue, and that's with installing the second fan on the radiator here. As you can see, the RAM module heat sinks are too tall for this to fit all the way towards the very end of the edge of the radiator back over here. So, and this doesn't slide any more forward. This is as far forward as this AIO will mount to the top panel. So the alternative to this would be to mount this to the front, but to mount this radiator with the fans included to the front would start impeding on the cables over here. Now it's not incredibly efficient because this is a 9900K and you really should have both fans up on here. But for the sake of demonstration in this video, I'm gonna be absolutely fine with this. Like I said, we still have options to mount to the front or mount this fan to the rear. So that's what I'm gonna do anyway. So here we go. We got the whole entire PC plugged in and put together. And then yeah, we got the one fan over here, but now I have to cable manage everything in the rear. So we're gonna see how this goes. And if this goes smoothly, this will really seal the deal for this case. So that's what I gotta cable manage. So uh, yeah, Shazam. Look at that. Look at that. Now it's not the neatest job. Obviously this is like a quick and dirty type of cable management. Or the amount of room that you have back here, which is not much, they give you a lot to work with to keep it in this compact form factor. I had to stuff cables under here. I knew that was gonna happen. The only unfortunate part about that is there's a cutout right here in the PSU shroud. So you're gonna be able to see some of these cables looking down into the case. Then you're gonna see some of these cables. So they give you plenty of tie down points, just a ton of tie down points, like up here, another row over here, here, along here, and down here, like so many different places to tie down your cables. It really gives you a lot of different routes and options to really work with what you're having. And I'm putting this in like a worst case scenario where I have cable extensions and RGB cables coming out of fans and pumps and stuff. So if you're trying to get SSDs in here, that's gonna be tricky. But if you don't have cable extensions, you might not have to worry about that. I have no idea how someone's gonna be able to fit a hard drive cage in with like a standard ATX power supply. I think you definitely have to go down one. Gonna have to slide over all the way over here because you can slide it over to the far most position right up against the fan here. Also, I would highly recommend a modular power supply or at least semi-modular. All right, so closing thoughts for the case. I really like it. At $110, I think it's worth it. The build quality is fantastic. The amount of clearance you have for a compact case is always going to be limited, but they do a good job here at trying to be as flexible as possible, even with cable management as limited as that gap is in the rear panel. You get those three RGB fans right over there and the lighting node and you have an overall really solid case in my opinion. Even the front panel here, right? You would think that'd be a piece of plastic but it's metal as well. If you wanted to put something on your desk that you want to look at and you're not sacrificing the full ATX motherboard feature set, then you definitely want to go with something like this. I would be careful with some of the AAO clearance issues like I mentioned earlier but altogether a really solid job from Corsair. Now let's get some B-roll in there. Yeah, it's no surprise I really like this case. I don't think it's any surprise at all. And I want to make you guys feel like you almost built in it, that you're familiar with it, that I could come from here to the camera to YouTube to you, lots of pointing, but to you, and feel like you are actually coming along for the ride and building this case and getting a really good understanding of what it's like. Now, one last question. Have you guys subscribed yet? Because if you haven't, it's all right. It's all right. I'm not asking you to subscribe. I'd rather you check out the channel, decide for yourself whether or not you feel like subscribing. I want you to decide that. I'm not going to tell you to subscribe. I'm not going to tell you to like the video. As much as that helps me, I want you guys to feel like you're in control of that and not force it down your throats. Because uh, I'm not a force it down your throat kind of guy. Yeah. Um, anyways... <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching.